I'm going to tell you a story about a boy who would never grow up. About the pirate who wished to catch him. About the island where fairies roamed. But this isn't the story you've heard before. Because sometimes, friends begin as enemies, and enemies begin as friends. Sometimes, to truly understand how things end, we must first know how they begin. Welcome to Neverland! Hi, you're watching Movie Guide, and I'm your host, Evie Bear. And we are literally in Neverland. I'm about to talk to Peter Pan himself and the rest of the cast and crew. Let's check it out. Be brave, Peter. I try to be. We have an ancient prophecy from when the fairy kingdoms reigned on this island. The prophecy tells of a boy who would lead an uprising against me. A boy who could fly. So, um, Joe's known for building a world. How was that experience working with him and um, him building the sets and everything like that? Yeah, working with Joe was fantastic. It was one of the reasons I wanted to be in the film in the first place. And um, he really did such an incredible job at building this sort of new vision of, of Neverland. And, and, and it was really fun to be a part of it and to get to play in and explore the incredible sets that they built. I feel like he's very visual. Yeah. So how is it coming in as a, a newcomer to the world of acting? Yeah, it was pretty <laughs> exciting being able to see these amazing sets that they built. Like, they built the native forest. They built the never forest, the, yeah. never, oh, the native village and yeah. the never forest. The native village was like a carnival sort of thing. And they had a giant trampoline in the middle, which was pretty fun. I got to have one little go on it, but yeah. it was they closed it off a little bit for the fight scenes with Garrett and Taju, which is very exciting. <laughs> yeah, and part of the message is to kind of try, no matter what the outcome is. Could you guys talk a little bit about why that's good for kids to hear? Yes, absolutely. And not only that, it's also to believe in yourself and that you can do anything. And that's, yes, definitely... A lot of what the story is about, about Peter believing in himself so that he can fly. <laughs> yeah. And his purpose really is to, you know, continue on being with his, finding his mother. Can you talk about Yes, him? yes. A lot of the story is Peter being driven to find his mother. And that's what we discussed in rehearsal stages with Joe. He had a board that said um, Peter's positives and Peter's negatives. And... That was one of them. Well, there was, on his positive side, there was the brave hero of Neverland and the orphanage. And another one in the positive were rebellious and mischievous. And one of the negatives was that he's quite selfish. And he's selfish in a way that's valid and sweet. It's for finding his mother, but it's still what he's doing is all for his own ambitions. And that's, yes, that's a big part of the film. Sweet! Gentle children, you who weep molten pearls of innocent tears, dry them, dear Nippers, for I have sprung you from life's cruel dungeon and hereby grant you liberty. <laughs> Your character has a moment where he could have grace on Pan. Why does he decide not to? Well, it's interesting you bring that up. When we were rehearsing that scene, at one point, I hold the, you know, the sword up to his neck and I'm questioning him and he's terrified. And then at one point, I give him my sword. It's almost like, yeah. you want to do this, kid? It's like, if you want to do it, now's your time because you're not going to get this moment back. And, and Joe really liked that idea because, in a way, he loves being Blackbeard, right? And he loves being the king of Neverland but he's also pretty sad kind of character. And he maybe wants to be relieved of it. And maybe this is the person who's gonna end all that for him. So I like that complexity, but yeah. Now you don't actually, you don't play villains that much. No. And you know, everybody reading your press notes, everybody says you're like the likable, you know, very likable guy. So how is I, that? I write those press notes <laughs> to say, you, you know, make sure that they're saying nice Don't things. buy any of that. It was great fun. Yeah. Everyone, yeah people love playing the villain. 
I think in life, how often do you get to really do what you want to do and go for what you want to go for, like with no recompense? It doesn't happen very often. So I can tell you we did, we did like a week of pirate boot camp. And when you put about 15 grown up men in a room, tell them to be pirates, and it was literally a dress up box. And we were all going in and dressing up as our pirates. No one really wanted to leave that room. So there's something about going off on a ship is just intoxicating. Now the whole message, your character's specific goal is to stay young, no matter what, like yep. whatever the circumstance. Um, mm. Why do you think that's pertinent in today's? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think anyone really cares about looking younger, feeling younger. I don't really see any evidence of that around at all. Uh, it's probably been around for all time. Yeah. But the obsession with it right now seems to be at fever pitch. And, and, Ultimately, what Barry is saying, uh, that's Barry who wrote the original book, is that the secret to staying young is in here and in here. Think like an 11-year-old. See the world as Neverland, full of magic and wonder and adventure. And yeah, there's danger, but it's an adventure. Yeah. Um, and as soon as you lose that, as soon as you kind of grow up, as soon as you start worrying about being cool, and as soon as you worry about, oh, what clothes I'm wearing, what people think of me, it's over. Do you know how to work a ship? How hard could it be? Speed! Yes. The rope! Yes. Boy! This is still a lot harder than it looks! Yeah! We're sailing now! And I was reading that Joe kind of wanted to use some of your background as, as your character's basis, right? Mm. You know, Joe has this wonderful ability of taking these characters and stories that we know and love and putting his own unique, insanely creative twist on them. And he was doing something new with Blackbeard and, and something new with Tiger Lily. And he said to me uh, that he imagines this young sort of the, because it's an origin story and we're meeting Hook really young, he said he'd like to think that he was out of like an old John Ford film and, and um, that he would be completely happy on, on a horse in the prairie. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, I'm from the Midwest, but yeah. um, you know, I'm not the best horse rider. Now, you're actually friendly to Peter Pan in yeah. this movie. Yeah. What that's kind of different. For it was the story. a different twist. But it, I mean, but when I finished reading it, I thought it was so refreshing. Mm -hmm. This, you know, we've seen many versions of this film, and Jason Fuchs had written uh, such a wonderful screenplay, and he'd actually grown up uh, like with Peter Pan his whole life, and was such a fan of Peter Pan, and he managed to create this wonderful new story that was seeing a young Peter that um, hadn't learned how to fly yet or didn't know he could fly yet, and, and a young James Hook who um, doesn't really have his hook yet, and he becomes Peter's ally through this, and they, um, they overcome their obstacles to sort of help each other and, and um, help Peter find his mother and help Hook get home to a home he doesn't remember, and it was this new sort of wild take, and I was wondering how anybody would would react to it and and uh, and Joe was just like look we're creating a new world right now and this is going to be a neverland like nobody's ever seen so let's go have fun and don't be afraid to act like a child and be childish and flamboyant and bigger than life and and let's we do a lot of dark films and we like stress and lose weight and don't eat and, and stuff and and uh, um, uh, let's take advantage of like just laughing every day and having fun at how many times you fall on your face. Yeah. <laughs> Have you come to come, me, Peter? I don't believe in bedtime stories. Oh.